Hello YouTube, Sir Dragon X here, coming to you from the beautiful city of San Miguel de Ande. Today, we're going to do part one of a three-part series on the healthcare system in Mexico. Welcome back to Retire Life in Mexico, no bull. Not only where we present you with the facts, but we present you with the true reality. Today is part one of a three-part series on healthcare in Mexico. One of the main things that I see people inquire about is healthcare in Mexico. So in this series, I decided to address this topic. In part one of this series, I am going to share my own personal story and experience with private healthcare system here in Mexico. You see folks, I was diagnosed with head and neck cancer around two and a half years ago here in Mexico, and we decided to have my cancer treatment done here as well. Today, I'm gonna share a very personal part of my life and my battle with cancer, specifically how Mexico literally saved my life. This video is gonna be longer than usual, but stick around until the end for my surprise ending. Before we start, I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel and hit the little bell so you won't miss any of my future videos. I also encourage you to like this video if you enjoyed the content. It helps me get the word out on YouTube. Also, don't forget to visit our Facebook and Instagram at the links listed in the video and in the banner of this channel. Oh, and one more thing. We just expanded our social media presence on Twitter. You can find the link in the description of this video and in the banner of our channel. In May of 2019, we were in the process of moving to San Miguel de Ande, and during our move, I noticed a lump on the left side of my throat. We were still in the United States, so I promptly rushed to the doctor to have it checked. After numerous calls to the doctor's office, we finally got an appointment a week later. Once we arrived to the doctor's office, about after an hour wait, we were placed in a little room for approximately two hours, and finally a nurse practitioner showed up. We explained my issue and the nurse practitioner wasn't even looking at me. She sat in front of a computer and ordered a battery of tests. Needless to say, four appointments later, various tests that had nothing to do with my throat and $3,000 billed to the insurance company, the nurse practitioner determined that I had a lump in my throat. How surprising was that? Good news though, my A1C was good. The nurse practitioner explained that they were going to have to order an MRI in order to determine the cause of the lump. The doctor's office advised me that there would be an 8 to 10 day waiting period to get pre-approved from my insurance company in order to perform the MRI. Now granted, this whole process had already taken 4 weeks and now it was time to wait another week or two. So we waited, and we waited, and we waited and a month passed with no resolution. Frustration really started to sit in by now. What was taking so long? The only response the doctor's office could give me was that my insurance company was requiring more information. We were so frustrated that I even offered to pay out of pocket whatever it cost for the MRI to be done. And even then, the next scheduling slot for the MRI was two to three weeks away. Can you believe that? Even after offering to pay out of pocket, not only were they stalling, but this was gonna take another two to three weeks to get my schedule in for an MRI. We decided that we couldn't wait any longer, so we started to research options in Monterrey, Mexico, which is about two and a half hours south of where we were living at the time. After some research, we called a well-recommended ENT doctor in Monterrey who was housed in the Elian Zambrano Hospital. This also happens to be the private hospital where the Tecnológico de Monterrey Medical School is located. The Tecnológico de Monterrey is considered the best private university in Mexico. The doctor said he would see us as soon as we arrived, so we rushed to Monterrey. The following day, first thing in the morning, we saw the doctor who confirmed that I would need an MRI with contrast. He instructed me to go to a local imaging lab and that he could see me later on that evening and we could go over the results. I looked at the doctor and said, you mean today? Are you sure we'll have my results today? The doctor looked at me with a puzzled look on his face and replied, 
Well, if the radiologist is there on duty, you will get your results in two to three hours. And if he's not there, we'll have to wait till tomorrow. Wow. I sat there in shock what the doctors in the United States were unable to accomplish in two months, this doctor was going to accomplish in a day or two. How could this be? As the doctor started to write up my orders for the MRI, I began to look around his office at all his credentials on his walls. I discovered that not only had he studied at the Tecnológico de Monterrey Medical School, he was also a professor there. As my eyes kept wandering, I noticed a diploma with Hebrew writing on it. I also noticed that he had various decorations in his office from Jerusalem. I became very curious because the year before retiring, I had spent four months in Jordan for work. So I politely asked the doctor if he had been to Jerusalem. He turned to me and said, I studied my ear, nose and throat specialty in Israel at one of the best hospitals there. I was really impressed. But then I noticed two more diplomas, one from MIT and the other from Harvard for pediatric ear, nose, and throat residencies. I remember thinking to myself, I was in good hands and we definitely made the right choice to come to Monterrey. With orders in hand, we promptly rushed to the imaging lab. They indicated that the radiologist was on duty, but he was running a little bit behind. They told us that we may need to wait an extra hour or so for the results, but they assured us that we would have our results by the end of the day. They took me in immediately and performed the MRI. When I got out, I waited in anticipation for the bill. As a receptionist handed me the bill, I remember thinking, here we go. At least it was worth the several thousand dollars that I was gonna pay to get some results. I looked at the bill and I remember saying, this can't be right. It was $270. I was looking at the reception with this dumbfounded look on my face and asked if that was the right amount. She kindly asked me, is there something wrong with the bill I gave you? I just remember looking at her with this blank stare in my face and paying the bill. To this day, I am not sure if she thought I was crazy. We returned to the doctor's office with my results in hand. The doctor reviewed the MRI and said it appeared to be a cyst and that he was gonna to have to take a biopsy to make sure that it wasn't cancerous. He told us, the tests are gonna take a while. I asked him, how long is a while? He replied, two to three days. That's a while? I was used to the doctor saying two or three weeks. Two days later, we met with the doctor again. He told us that he had good news that the cyst was not cancerous, but that we would need to have it removed anyway. Just to get an idea, I asked him, how much if we do the operation here at Elion? He insisted that it was very expensive and proceeded to give me a ballpark figure of $6,000. I looked at him and asked, that's the total for everything? He said, yes, but we can do it at a cheaper hospital if you want to. I looked at him in shock and said, you know what? Let's do it here in Elion, which is the, one of the best private hospitals in Monterrey. So we scheduled the surgery for November so we could complete our move to Mexico. I checked into the hospital on November 8, 2019 for surgery. The surgery was supposed to take two to three hours. About two hours into the surgery, the surgeon went out to talk to my wife. He explained to my wife that he had removed the cysts, but there were two lymph nodes that were stuck to my carotid artery. And although they looked normal, he didn't feel comfortable leaving them in there given the location. He indicated to my wife that he was waiting for additional tools and supplies to continue the operation. Needless to say, it took him an additional three hours. What was supposed to be a two to three hour surgery turned out to be a six hour surgery. I spent two days in the hospital for observation and the doctor released me and told me to text him if I experienced any complication and that he would see me in 10 days to remove the drain. Oh, I forgot to tell you, yes. I had the doctor's personal cell phone number and we regularly communicated through WhatsApp even previous to the surgery. That's right, I had a direct line to the doctor. No nurse, no answering service, a direct line. Not to mention that he texted me every day to check on me. I even sent him pictures of the drain and my scar so that he could check to make sure that it was healing well. We met with the doctor to have the drain removed and he asked me to sit down for some unexpected news. He started by saying that the cyst did not have any cancer but the lymph nodes that he removed tested positive for cancer. 
He himself couldn't believe it. It was not normal protocol to remove those lymph nodes since they looked fine, but for some reason he didn't feel comfortable leaving them in and figured better safe than sorry. I didn't know what to say. You get this hopeless sinking feeling in your heart that words cannot describe. My, my wife was speechless and started to break out crying. The doctor said that we need to get you into an oncologist as soon as possible, and I went for a PET scan at Doctor's Hospital in Monterrey. Upon meeting with the oncologist and reviewing the PET scan, the oncologist diagnosed me with head and neck cancer with unknown primary, meaning that they had caught it early since they couldn't find the tumor, which meant that it was treatable. The oncologist prescribed a combination of radiation therapy with chemotherapy. We discussed the option of traveling to Houston for treatment. Why not? The ND Anderson Cancer Center was known for being the best cancer clinic, right? In discussing this with my oncologist, he had no problems with me going to Houston, but he did point out that the radiation equipment at Christus Mogersa Hospital in Monterrey was the same latest equipment that they used at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Based on the medical care that I received up until that point, we decided to have the treatment done in Monterrey. We started my treatment after the New Year's, and I can tell you this, I have a newfound respect for those who have gone through cancer treatment. All I can say is that it was seven weeks of hell and a year of recovery. I still suffer side effects to this day. Needless to say, 35 radiation treatments later and three chemotherapies later, I am cancer free. It was brutal but I survived. I came out alive and fully recuperated a year and a half later. I want to offer a sincere shout out to all of those who are undergoing cancer treatment or are cancer survivors. All I can say is never give up, no matter how hard it may get. Now, are you ready for the surprise ending? My US insurance covered all of it. Not only did they cover it, they picked up the tab, no questions asked, no waiting for pre-approvals. The total cost of the treatment, approximately $25,000 and my out-of-pocket expense was $2,500, a fraction of what I would have paid out-of-pocket being treated in the United States. So you ask, what did I learn about private healthcare in Mexico? First, my doctor was able to accomplish in two days what my U.S. doctor couldn't accomplish in two months. The doctors in Mexico take a human approach to medicine. I was treated like a human being, not a patient or a number. I had a personal relationship with my doctors. I even to this day communicate with them. And you know what? The care and the word medical care comes first. The doctors truly cared about me and my medical attention that I received was better than any attention that I've ever received in the United States. I hope you enjoyed listening to my story. It's been kind of a therapy for me after what I've been through to tell it. So thanks for taking the time to stick with me and listen. In the next episode, I will be covering how the private healthcare system works in Mexico and even have a special guest in store to explain how private medical insurance works here in Mexico. Now, don't forget to subscribe and visit us on our newly formed Twitter feed. Until next time, see you soon.